was a great man. I wrote another book called Talking Peace. And I hate Plan B. Even though I enjoy rest, I always feel like a sh I think it's actually... To be successful, oftentimes, most of the time, you have to follow your instincts. You have to follow your gut. You have to. Your parents may say wrong. Your whoever may say wrong. But you have to do it. Now, speaking of that, you've got to love what you do. And I've seen so many instances where people with great talent... went into things that they didn't love, and they failed. I've seen other instances where people with far less talent, I went to the Wharton School of Finance. I used to say, until coming here, it's the greatest school in the world, the greatest business school in the world. I may have to revise my speeches to put it at number two. Soon I probably will. The way you're going, I think I'm gonna have to do that pretty soon. But I, I would always say to people, and I'd see people, and I'd say, you gotta love what you do. Because, you know, if you love what you do, you work harder. You never, ever quit. Never, ever give up. You know, there's another one. I was, I was coming down, and I just wrote it, and I've very rarely spoken about it. And frankly, I don't like to talk in the negative. But sometimes people are better off knowing the facts. Should I tell you what it is or not? Yes. I had a feeling you were going to say you know, when people ask me about success, I've just started thinking about it over the last couple of years because I've seen a lot of it. You have to have an ability to handle pressure because you, no matter how successful you are, I have many, many friends and enemies, a lot of enemies too, I don't care, but they're smart. I have a lot of enemies and I've watched people and I've seen it. And people that can handle pressure can be entrepreneurs, can be successful. Now, I have some friends that are really, really smart, but they can't handle pressure. In which case, they should work for somebody, do great, and have a good life. There's nothing wrong with it. Because I almost think that's an instinctive thing, the ability to handle pressure. Now, one of the things I tell people about pressure. Did you do your best? And I thought about the time I was at the academy. Our country was at war, and I spent a lot of time listening to music, reading books. I would go across uh, the other side of the bay, and I would learn how to fly airplanes, and I didn't know what to say. And finally, I looked at him, and I said, no, sir, I didn't always do my best. And he stared at me with cold eyes, and finally said, why not? I sat there for a long time. And then he turned his chair around to end the interview and began to work on some papers on the table behind. And I finally got up and stumbled out of the room. I got the job. Probably because I told him the truth. I didn't always do my best. The answer to this question should apply to our personal lives and also to the society in which we live. And that's the difference between, there's, a, there's like a whole industry now that's dedicated to trying to help people get motivated. And a lot of the people that are involved in that are very unqualified. A hundred percent. Because they're not really doing anything. No. And there's so many people that haven't actually done anything, but they'll try to teach you how to get your life in order, yeah. and how to get your mind right, and develop that warrior mentality. I'm like, bitch, you don't have that. Well, they're utilizing the weakness of the world right now. Yeah. The world's in a very bad place. So the pe these, these people who are like con artists, they sit back and say, oh, I can come up with this. I can come up with this, and this right here can probably make me some money. Yeah. So they're in it for, for, for fucked up reasons. There's just not a whole lot of people like you. You're, you know, I love that phrase, uncommon amongst uncommon men. Because it's, it's such a good phrase because it just shows you you, you've been on this path for so long and you're grinding for so long, but you're also honest about 
there's moments where you don't want to fucking do this. Oh. Which is why <sighs> it's so interesting because you do it. Right. You you do it without any reservation. You just go through it. Right. But you always talk about it. I don't want to fucking do this shit, but you always do it. That's it. it. But that's what people need to hear because they feel like that somewhere out there there's some superhuman person who never feels despair and doesn't have any there's there's no no hesitation so they feel like there's this person that's so different than them and so much stronger than them and doesn't ever have any procrastination and you're like that's not me <laughs> enough um, and I think increasingly the goal is important for for many reasons um, the, the, the goal of, of having uh, the, the best technology uh, in space uh, that that is, I think, going to become increasingly important, and it'll be increasingly increasingly important for the United States to use what I think is its greatest attribute, which is uh, invention uh, and innovation, um, to to create space technology that is um, the best in the world. Um, and, and in fact, I think if the United States does not use uh, breakthrough innovation, uh, it will fall behind. So I think this is, th th this is not something that was a risk in times past, but I think is a risk now. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, Do you characterize that risk in terms of peer adversary? I hate plan B. <laughs> and I tell you why because we have so many doubters. We have so many of those people that say no and you can't do it, that's impossible. But when you start doubting yourself, that's very dangerous. Because now what you're basically saying is, is that if my plan doesn't work, I have a fallback plan, I have a plan B. And that means that you start thinking about plan B and every thought that you put into plan B, you're taking away now that thought and that energy from plan A. And it's very important to understand that we function better if there is no safety net, because plan B becomes a safety net. It says that if I fail, then I fall and I get picked up and I have something else there that will, that will protect me.